Hey guys, it's Kevin from True Champion Gaming here, and we did a very quick rules video recently on the channel. I really would suggest going and check that out. The whole purpose of it was to be as fast as possible so it won't take much of your time, but there are some interactions there that even an experienced card game player might not know about. So I do suggest checking that out, but today we're going to be going over slightly more complicated rulings, just more lengthy rulings, not as quick ones, but let's just get right into it. So the pride mechanic means that unless you meet those pride requirements, you aren't going to be able to attack with that card. Something like Tempest Silverback has a pride 5, which means that your champion needs to be a level 5 in order to attack with it. This doesn't mean that you have to be level 3 with buffs or anything. I, I have seen a lot of confusion about levels. You can be even a level 1 Sylvie with 4 levels buffing by, you know, Beast Bond Ears and just other cards that are going to give you artificial levels and stuff. So don't get confused about that. You just need to be a total level of five with your champion in order to attack with it. However, the old ruling used to be different about the next thing I'm gonna say. They did make a change so that has caused some confusion where you actually can retaliate with a pride ally even if you don't meet the current levels. The easiest way to think about it is if your opponent was gonna try to hit into your gorilla that gorilla is probably going to hit you back. It doesn't matter if it's going to listen to you or not. It's going to fight for itself. So that's kind of an easy way to think about it. It does definitely help out the whole tamer class since most of those have the pride. But unfortunately, Syl Sylvia is still pretty weak. We all, we're all rooting for you, but <laughs> it's just not getting there yet. Now, durability on swords is something that I've seen a little bit of confusion on as well. The durability on a sword will only go down or the sword will only break if it has a durability of one if that sword connects with a target. That still might be a little bit confusing, so let me explain it like this. If I attack into an ally with my Sword of Seeking and I kill that ally, let's say it's something like a Woodland Squirrels, right? Then the Squirrels dies, my sword hit the Squirrels, and then I'll lose my durability. However, if they do something like Veiling Breeze and prevent that damage, the squirrels won't die. But think of it like the sword still tried to hit it. It's still connected with the squirrel, but that squirrel was protected from that hit. It had some armor on, if you will. However, if they're playing green, um, just as an example, it doesn't necessarily have to be green, but if they're playing green and they activate a card like Reclaim or Zephyr, and they do something in response to the attack declaration that removes the target of that attack then basically that sword won't lose damage because you can think of that sword tried to connect with an object but it never hit anything so that durability wouldn't go down because it wasn't used your champion will still rest because you swung with the sword but that sword never got used so the durability won't get removed very very important ruling to know this next one's a little bit more complicated if a card requires a target to play, then you have to have a legal target in order to play it. Something like Zephyr requires you to suppress target ally or regalia. If there is only one ally on the board and no regalia, and I try to, let's say I'm level two Rai, I'm trying to get some enlightenment counters by casting a mage spell. I play a Zephyr, right? targeting the only ally slash regalia on the whole board and my opponent in response does a zephyr of their own the interesting thing here is that because the stack resolves backwards my opponent's zephyr will trigger now the same thing is going to happen to this ally no matter what both of us are trying to target with a zephyr so that ally will get banished until the end of turn but then my zephyr will go to resolve and it won't be able to find a legal target, so it actually won't get cast at all. This means that my level two Rai won't get that enlightenment counter. So you can see why it's actually pretty crucial to know this ruling because enlightenment counters lead to card draw, which leads to Rai killing you faster. Another crucial thing to know is that things like ignite the soul, right? Deal one damage to target unit. You know, you can't just play that on turn one if you're playing like a fire Rai deck or something to try to get that floating memory in there. You know, I mean, you could do it on your own spirit if you really want to, but just remember that in order to play a card that says target, you have to actually target something. Going on on this ruling, still, still the same ruling, but continuing on with it is something like Savage Slash, right? A lot of people think that you can't do an attack if your opponent has no champion. So like, let's say you're going first. 
you actually can Savage Slash because it's just an attack card being played. It's not actually the card itself targeting anything. So you would use Savage Slash, nothing would obviously happen, but then it would go to the graveyard. Whereas something like Ignite the Soul, unless you were targeting your own champion, you can't just play it without a target to have it go to the graveyard for floating memory. So that's again, another really important ruling to know um, because those are pretty played cards. A recent rulings change is cards like Dungeon Guide and Tome of Sacred Lightning, although I don't know if Tome of Sacred Lightning counted beforehand. I do know Dungeon Guide counted beforehand. These cards no longer materialize from the material deck. So cards like Avalon, the domain that mills to every time you activate a water card or water element card, um, that has a permanent effect on it that if you materialize a card, it destroys it. So what I was trying to do with Water Rye beforehand was playing out, you know, level two, level one, playing an Avalon because you kind of wanted to play it as fast as you could and then doing dungeon guides into your level two, level three. That way you could still skip your materialize phase, but get up into your champion. However, beforehand, I thought that, or I, I learned that you couldn't do that. Now they just recently made a rule change. So you actually can do dungeon guide and not have it count as materialization. It now just counts as leveling up your champion. Another important thing to know is that Beseech the Winds still does actually materialize and counts as materialization because the card itself says materialize a card from your material deck, you know? So if, if a card specifically states that it is materializing, then it is going to count as materialization. Another one that we're gonna put our editor to work here for, damage is calculated by the person receiving damage. This sounds weird and it's very, very important to know. We're gonna use two cards as a reference, Deflecting Edge and Rending Flames. So let's say me as a player is being attacked by something like a Fire Lorraine and they play Rending Flames and they're using it with their Sword of Seeking and they're banishing the, the Fire Element cards from their graveyard. So the Sword is gonna do one damage, the Rending Flames is gonna do three damage. So together that's gonna do four and then Rending Flames effect is going to double that damage. However, because of the rule that I just said, damage is calculated by the person receiving or the unit receiving damage, however you wanna say it, I can actually choose to have the four damage be dealt to me and then double it, right? But then if I play deflecting edge and prevent three of that damage, the cool thing is I can have four, or sorry, three of the four damage prevented and then have it be doubled. So. A miss, uh, something that gets missed sometimes is that people think, okay, I have eight damage coming into me, I'll deflect an edge and I'm gonna take five, right? No, you can have the four damage come in, reduce three of it by deflecting edge, make it one, and then that one gets doubled so you only take two damage. That is a huge difference. Taking two damage between taking five damage can literally save you a game. You might be able to win out instead of losing the game. So again, super important ruling to know. There's a lot of instances where this actually can come up. So make sure that you remember that one as a, as a player like doing that and as a player receiving it. So this is actually a ruling that I've been told a lot of different answers on, but I finally did confirm that you can actually bring the cost of a card with efficiency down to zero, even if you are under an effect like Orb of Choking Fumes. So Orb of Choking Fumes is a common card used by, or is commonly used by Xander in your materialization phase to they crack it, draw a card, and then they make everything that you play cost one more. However, cards with efficiency get reduced based on your level cost. So let's say you have a careful study in hand, this card will normally cost eight. However, if you are level eight, it will cost zero, right? If your opponent did a ch orb of choking fumes on that turn, you would be level eight, the card would cost level eight, so you would bring it down to zero, but then orb of choking fumes would make it cost one more, so you'd actually end up paying one, right? However, if you're level nine, the careful study will cost nine and be reduced down nine efficiency because of your level and cost zero. So under Orb of Choking Fumes, you still actually can free play some specific cards. It's a really important thing to know. I actually lost a, uh, a couple games because I didn't know this ruling. So, you know, every single ruling that we're talking about in this video can literally be the, the difference between you winning and losing a game. And especially if you're in a tournament setting, you wanna make sure you know these, because some of these you might not even think to call for a judge on. So make sure to keep watching our videos, like, 
subscribe. I'm just self-promoting the middle of it, the video now and I have no shame about it. The last one's actually a pretty quick one. This, this could have gone in our other quick video, but we just are keeping it five rulings in a video. So very short and simple. You can give, and but actually really important to know because I did not think it worked this way at first. You can give a unit stealth after an attack has already been declared. So let's say you have smoke bombs out as a regalia, you have a gildas on the field, and your opponent is trying to attack into that gildas and kill it. If they're gonna do, you know, five damage to it or something, you know it's gonna get toasted, you can banish the smoke bombs and actually give it stealth after that attack's already been declared. So the gildas will survive, they've wasted an attack, and you got to draw a card off stealth or smoke bombs. So that card's actually pretty underrated for how good it actually is. And you could actually probably get some people with that ruling because they're not really gonna know how it works. It's it's a little counterintuitive. As someone that's played a lot of card games, I was pretty surprised to learn that interaction in this game. So Grand Archive has a couple of weird, wacky things like that. I think that they're really great though. Even the weird rulings, you know, the, the game still just makes sense once you start playing it a lot and everything. And everything feels pretty balanced except for, you know, Lorraine, but that'll, uh, that'll get toppled one day. But definitely make sure to keep watching our videos. We try to make sure that everything's verified before we make a, a posting about it. There are no official judges of the game yet, but there's a lot of people that are extremely familiar with the rules and we're, we're, we're trying to get everything verified so that you guys can be uh, you guys can rest assured that you know the proper rulings for this game. So we'll try to bring you all the ones that are a little bit wackier, you might not think of, but can absolutely impact a, a game. And we do plenty of other content as well with deck profiles and uh, just a bunch of Grand Archive content. So please make sure to give us a follow. Until next time, peace.